Tom Contraguero is the only, oh, I'm sorry, Charles Pugh. There are two 33s on the West Virginia team. Neither one was on the field at that time. So it was something that happened post-play. Like West Virginia is in their jet package, which means we better hurry and show you this. There's the read right there. You see this a hundred times. Come off the fake and take it to the outside. If you're the quarterback, good read. He sees that Botts comes down, takes it to the outside. And what West Virginia is trying to do right now, Mike, is create tempo by getting in and out of the huddle with their quarterback. And then everything on the sideline takes them back. White makes one man miss and pack the freshman runs to get another first down across the 35-yard line. Tez Morris had to make the late tackle, but a gain of 13 after the gain of 19. Mike, little cat and mouse game this time by Botts. Watch what he does. He's playing with his shoulders a little bit, trying to get the quarterback White to commit. White actually misread it, but has such speed and quickness that he's still able to get up the field and recover from the mistake that he had on, on, the, me, on, the, on the mesh point. And we have a Pittsburgh player uh, who is shaken up for a moment. It looks to be H.B. Blades, and they're looking at his left leg. The fans are booing, thinking that he's uh, trying to stop the game here intentionally and slow down the West Virginia offense. That's the last guy in America that would <laughs> slow down the game. H.B. Blades is a warrior who wants to play football no matter what the temperature is. Well, and he is the uh, last guy that Pittsburgh can afford to lose in a game like this. Number 51. It uh, doesn't look good for the moment there. It hasn't been a great year for this Pitt team overall, 5-5. Five and five, But I'm so impressed with some of the, the individuals and the character that they have shown in trying to get through this year. 5-5, five and five, it's easy to mail it in. There's some guys in here that are not giving up, and H.P. Blades looked like he did get rolled on that play. And then bent backwards as well. Blades out first and ten, and this time White does give it, and continuing to keep his feet going is the uh, other fabulous newcomer, Slayton. Mike, spread offense, it's the term. It's it's, it's all over the country. Everybody Urban does Meyer, it. They, you know, Everybody wants to talk about the spread offense. This is one of the more unusual spreads that you'll find in the country because they're going to spread you all over the field, and then they're going to run their quarterback, and they're going to run Steve Slayton, their tailback. They want to run the football while they'll spread you away from the line of scrimmage. Five runs, one pass thus far. Here he is run. Number six. It's a first down and more for Slayton across midfield these are two freshmen by the way who are doing the job with the running three first downs on this drive talked about how they lost 74 percent of their offense from a year ago and they had to rely on some freshmen i think a lot of people expected jason gwaltney to be the true freshman and he started off the year pretty well but it's been really steve slayton who's picked up this the pace over the last five games it's funny talking to rich rodriguez he said you know we tested him out against virginia tech and he passed the test and from that point on it's been him taking most of the handoffs for this offense. From midfield, design run with the quarterback White. He'll get a couple. That is Scott McKillop, who came in for H.B. Blades, a middle backer. who called his brother Chris earlier. I want to say this now before it happens, even in these tough conditions, that West Virginia has enough of a threat from the vertical passing game, especially Brandon Miles, number seven, that they're going to try to lull you to sleep and get you to really focus in on Pat White running and Steve Slayton running and run and then run, and then they're going to try to get you to overcommit up front and then go over top of you with a pass. They've already run Kirk on this drive for 58 yards. And here's a White pass. It was a slip screen that was covered, so White makes it up on his own. Pat White! Inside the 20, inside the 10, to the end zone. Out of bounds, inside the one. A run of 47 yards. Mike, he wants to go to the screen off to the right to Miles. It's well, well, well uh, positioned by the pit defense. They took it away. And next thing you know, you have Pat White back there who makes something out of nothing, improvising the speed. And that's, as a defensive coordinator, your worst nightmare because you're in perfect position, you defend the screen well, and then you have a quarterback who just makes a, makes a play off of terrific instincts. He has run for 81 yards, as you see. Slayton has found the end zone 11 times in the last three games. Here goes the freshman, but a penalty marker stops this one. Slayton has 11 touchdowns, six in the game against Louisville, 
five of those on the ground. Prior to snap, false start on the offense. Number 62, five yard penalty, remains first down. Brian Stanchek, who threw the great block, calls for the flag there. That is the worst possible sign for Pittsburgh. The top tackler in the Big East, H.B. Blades, being carted off after getting rolled up on earlier in this drive. Not only that, but the leader, the heart and soul of this defense. The Scott McKillop slides in physically, but the leadership, as Kirk said, will be absent. Five-yard flag, first and goal for the six. Play clock at five. White to Slick, trying to bounce it to the outside. And a very nice job by Pittsburgh to stack it up. Fans want a flag here as the pushing continued after the play, but none forthcoming. Aaron has an update on H.P. Blades. Hey, Mike, no word yet for the, from the training room on H.P. Blades, but obviously being taken back to the locker room. Couldn't really tell if it was an ankle, calf, or hamstring, but he definitely was grabbing down there. Okay. The fans behind Pittsburgh's bench loving it, because remember, H.P. Blades providing some bulletin board material, saying, hey, West Virginia, they consider us city boys. They think we're arrogant. Well, they're country boys. There's nothing out there in Morgantown. Yeah, those comments earlier in the week, and the fans letting him hear about it. On the sideline, second down, toss, Slayton. Will get stopped at the two. Nice play by Tez Morris. Free safety out of Hamilton, Ohio, along with McKillop. And we have a marker down on this one. Very intense game all the way around. Stands, field, and two big West Virginia penalties here after first and goal at the one. And you can read Rich Rodriguez's lips. Be smart. Not here. Holding on the offense, number 49, 10 yard penalty. Josh Bailey is 49 on senior night from West Virginia. The senior from Gilbert is flat. Self destructing here after the big play by Pat White. Now that they've had to push White back, they'll probably see West Virginia go back to their, their spread offense, try to give White the option of running or throwing. Maybe a little option look down inside the red zone as well. Maybe the worst news for these guys. If Pat White's back, we can be dangerous. <laughs> right. This is second and goal. Three flags on this drive. White looking for help. Pointing, throwing, end zone, touchdown. Slayton. Second touchdown reception of the year, 13th of the season. I thought as White was scrambling, there might have been a push in the back that was a call. Mike, two great illustrations of what a quarterback who can improvise, what he can do. Now there's the threat of a defense. They're concerned he's going to take off and run. And a great job by Pat White of getting his eyes downfield and seeing Slayton slip into the end zone. One play, he scrambles for big yardage. The next time he improvises, the defense comes up to take it away, and he finds Slayton in the end zone and shows that he can throw the football. Good eyes that time by the young freshman. Pat McAfee on for the extra point, and the freshman from Plum, Pennsylvania, bangs it through. You know they gained 112 yards on that drive because of all the penalties? Officially goes down as an 82-yarder. The two freshmen who have led the Mountaineer offense all year, White and Slayton, hook up. If it wasn't so cold, I'd take my hat off to these West Virginia fans. These are loyal and dedicated folks who are here tonight in great numbers. Where the wind chill is in the single digits, it is frigid cold. A biting wind on this Thanksgiving night. But they want to see their Mountaineers clinch a share of the Big East title. They could clinch the BCS berth with a win here tonight and a win Saturday against South Florida. Remember, this is a program that last year was in a similar position, two games away. These fans want another chance, and they want to capitalize on it this time. Kickoff return is a story for Pittsburgh. It's taken back to the 22-yard line by Kirkley. On the last drive, you get a little bit of an idea of what Pat White can do, and getting into the open field, making so many plays. And Rich Rodriguez said, guys, he's fast. And, and when I say fast, I mean really fast. And you get it in these conditions, you can see and understand now what the coach meant. And a good job by Slayton of slipping out, seeing his quarterback needed some help. 
gets into the end zone, and White had the vision there to put the ball right on the money for the touchdown. It was 97 total yards for White because of the three penalties on the drive. Palco, a pump covered downfield, so he comes back and completes it to his tight end, Eric Gill. Gain of eight, with second and two coming up after the Kevin McLeod tackle. Let me just clean this up here. Pittsburgh's kickoff returns. If you were with us three Thursdays ago in Louisville, when Pittsburgh muffed the opening kickoff that was a Louisville touchdown and then returned the ensuing kickoff, that was done by Terrell Allen, a sophomore. Allen, for disciplinary reasons, is not here tonight. So the Panthers have a couple of different men returning kickoffs. And we're sad he's not here because he gave us the memory of the year. <laughs> Second and two coming up. And in the backfield. Pressure on Palco. Great job to be tough and get rid of it. And complete the pass. Out to Steve Bukas. Here's Reese Davis, Sports Center 30 at 30. Reese. All right, Mike, Broncos and Cowboys on Thanksgiving. Second play of overtime. Ron Dane churned out the second longest run of his career, and Jason Elam paid it off with a field goal after the 55-yard run. Broncos win it in OT 24-21. In baseball, the Josh Beckett deal that would send him to the Red Sox on hold until after the holiday weekend. They're going through some medical records. Mike Lowell would also be involved in that trade. Sports Center after the game, ESPN News, always. Thank you, Reese. Happy Thanksgiving, sir. Here is first down. Here is Palco throwing deep for Greg Lee. Hold it in. Takes it all the way. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. He's complete to number 86. 63 yards. Mike, I was just about to talk about Tyler Palco in a rivalry game as a leader after you get down seven early how important it is to come right back and greg lee goes right by d Mc mccann and shows the speed and holds on to the football which at times has been a problem for lee on the deep ball gets the touchdown but tyler palco the leadership there threw a ball took one right in the mouth came back the next play and put it right on the money for a touchdown and that is full out backyard football sprint go fly pattern haul it in Josh Cummings adds the extra point. All passes by Pittsburgh. Three plays, 78 yards. And Greg Lee, guy from Florida, trying to adapt to the cold weather. It's part of the backyard brawl. Palco took a couple of shots on that drive, but stands up, stands tall, and stands out on the big hit to Lee. All square at seven. That Tyler Palco was such a big part of last year. He watched this game growing up as a kid. And uh, after all the big hits on that last drive, he uh, reminded Eric Wicks that uh, I'm, I can stand up. Don't worry. You saw me last year rally my team in this game to keep a BCS berth alive. Mike, especially on the road when your team's 5-5, five and five. you need a spark. You need to make something happen. And Tyler Falco did that on that try. Antonio Lewis returns it out to the 25-yard line. So we'll get Pittsburgh's defense back out there and uh, see if they can solve Pat White out of Daphne, Alabama. The other lefty quarterback did it on the pass drive. Well, I, I'd love to see a guy who gets tested and stands right in there and handles it. And he's a leader for a team, as we've been talking about, that's been struggling. He's a vocal leader, he's an emotional guy, and the very next throw, he puts it over the shoulder to Greg Lee to tie this game up. First and 10 from the 26, White back out there, first run right up the middle is shut down by Charles Select, the junior out of Tampa, and let's go to Aaron Andrews. Aaron. Mike, that touchdown for Greg Lee, absolutely huge from him because, of course, that game we did versus Louisville, he had seven passes in that game, but he also dropped four. He took the blame, he took the finger pointing, he said it was my fault, it was lack of concentration on my end, but it is not going to affect my confidence. Definitely huge for Greg Lee, guys. And Aaron, that is so big early in a game for him to be able to make a catch like that because you're right, he's had some problems not only in the Louisville game but some others. White Monaroom, designed run. Actually, the umpire who you can use as a screen sometimes slowed him down a little bit. First down picked up out at the 40-yard line. Gain of 15 for White who's pushing 100 rushing yards.